Hi, and welcome to Discover Oklahoma. I'm Lauren Nelson. Before we officially get started, we are very happy to have you back. Thank you. I'm <laughs> glad to be back. And I'm Dean Olali. Today we're coming to you from a place called Shop Good in downtown Oklahoma City. This Oklahoman owned and operated shop started in an old barn. That's where the owners started running their hand-me-down printing press and making oaky themed t-shirts. And these Oklahomans who own this shop are all about giving back. 5% of what they sell is given to local Oklahoma charities. We'll show you around throughout the show. But first, how about a trip along the Mother Road? With more miles of Route 66 than any other state, there's always something to see or do on America's Main Street. So come along with me now to the Route 66 Interpretive Center in Chandler. Route 66, also known as the Will Rogers Highway, the Main Street of America, or of course the Mother Road, is not only steeped in history, it is history. The 2200 mile highway has been immortalized in song, television, and novel. For those who don't know, Oklahoma has more miles over the original Route 66 than any other state. It is at the Route 66 Interpretive Center in Chandler where you can explore the fascinating history of one of the original highways in the United States highway system. It's a place visited by people from all over the world. Oh my, there's from Belgium, Germany, there's probably 25 different international visitors that we have, a lot from Australia and France. We've, we've had them from almost, almost every country. And they'll take off two or three weeks just to tour Route 66. It's amazing. It kind of involves you as far as it's an audio visual museum. We have uh, antique automobile seats to sit on, like Model T's and Mustangs. We have motel beds you can lay on while you watch different short uh, films about neon signs, about Route 66 history, and there's photo exhibits. There's a little place for the kids to play in. It's, it's kind of a neat place to spend some time and just kind of enjoy and soak it all in. Nostalgia is an integral part of many people's lives. They point to it. Some like to explore Route 66 by taking an off-ramp into a bygone era. For young people, they too are fascinated by its history, and it's easy to become absorbed in it by way of the many short films on Route 66 that play throughout the center. There's six stations and the films are two to five minutes long and we give everyone a personal tour of the building and the facility when they come in and we also have a 20 minute documentary film it's called Dick Besser's Route 66 Adventure and it's a story about a man that went on Route 66 in 1959 with a couple of his college buddies and then he went back again about 40 years later in his red Corvette and it tells the difference between then and now and a lot of people like to watch that one they just love it they just and a lot of it is they like the route and they like the, the journey, but they like the people they meet along the way. There are numerous photographs which expertly document Route 66. Jerry McClanahan is an author and artist. He's written several books about the Mother Road. He says this interpretive center serves several functions, education, and why the Mother Road continues to capture everyone's imagination. Route 66 has come to symbolize the days where People were rediscovering America. They were getting out on their own and traveling in their private cars for the first time, not trains, not covered wagons. It just caught the world imagination about the romance of the open road. It stands for all those days of teepees and tail fins and neon signs. The Interpretive Center is housed in the historic armory in Chandler and it is a great venue for other activities. We have weddings, lots of weddings. In fact, we have 29 this year already. Uh -huh scheduled. Um, proms and banquets, um, alumni, the alumni banquet will be here this year. 350 people can be in here for an event at a time. We have tables, chairs to accommodate that many people, that many guests. The Route 66 Interpretive Center is located at 400 East 1st Street in Chandler. They're open 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. seven days a week during the summer months. And when you finish up in Chandler, why don't you just stay on the Mother Road and take it straight into Tulsa? There you'll find an incredible exhibit of Pulitzer Prize photos. Jason Grubbs takes us to the Gilcrease Museum. The raising of the American flag over Iwo Jima. Babe Ruth's final farewell. This is an extremely powerful exhibition. The shooting of Lee Harvey Oswald. The fall of the Berlin Wall. You will experience the full range of human emotions. 80 Pulitzer Prize winning photographs are on exhibit at the Gilcrease Museum. 
80 years of world history, beginning with the very first winter in 1942. It's a very powerful message in each one of the photographs. Nancy Lyle and her friend Jill Williams went room by room studying the images. They were moved by many of them. There were ones from when we were growing up, um, the Kent State shooting that came back really strong. Um, Vietnam photos. A good place to start is with a short overview video where some of the winning photographers talk about what you'll experience. And that gives guests a good kind of foundation and orients their visit. There are photos which capture world-changing events, some wrapped in despair and tragedy, like the Oklahoma City bombing. Others capture pure joy, like the Nigerian team winning an Olympic bronze in 1992, or a photo taken 10 years earlier of kids playing outside the projects in Chicago. Even Jill said, yeah. kids will be kids. You know, it's, it's the joy on their faces. Mm -hmm. They're so innocent. I think the exhibition offers the opportunity to journey into the heart and soul of the human experience. You'll notice tissue boxes throughout the exhibit, and there is a good reason why. A lot of these photographs are very emotional for a lot of folks. There's also a box here where you can leave a message about what photographs impacted you and why. We have some statements on each entry into the space that the exhibit does contain intense images. Uh, to help prepare people for the power that this exhibition holds. Besides the 80 images on the wall, there's 15 hours of interviews with Pulitzer photographers and another thousand photos found in interactive kiosk. Many of the winning photos came with portfolios. And they'll often have 10, 15, 20 photographs that accompany that portfolio. That are just as good as the one that won. Yeah, sometimes I wonder, well, why did you put that one on the wall? This is the one I like. But that's the very subjective nature, obviously, of these photographs. As you walk through the exhibit, take some time to read the text next to the images. The outcomes aren't always as tragic as what was originally captured by the photographer. What I found is that my first reaction to an image may change as I learn more about it. For instance, an image that is particularly disturbing may have a very positive outcome. And thanks to the photographer who was there to capture that bit of history, um, because otherwise how would millions of people have known about it? The Pulitzer exhibit is one visitors need to plan to spend a good amount of time with, even if it's to process what's been captured through the lens over eight decades. I certainly would advise anybody who comes to see the show, plan on two and a half to three hours to really do it justice. It's very powerful on many levels. Everyone should come and see it. At the Gilcrease Museum in Tulsa, I'm Jason Grubbs for Discover Oklahoma. The Gilcrease is located at 1400 North Gilcrease Museum Road. They're open 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tuesday through Sunday and closed on Monday. The Pulitzer Prize Photographs exhibit is on display through July 14th. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. You need to come early if you want, if you want to be guaranteed that you have um, what you want for lunch. The line forms early at this Shawnee hotspot. We'll show you why. I've always wanted to be in Edmond downtown and then I had a, my brother-in-law tell me about a place. Plus, it's all in the family for this Oklahoma-owned shop. Every day, every night, we have someone making biscuits by hand, so. And they're working around the clock to make some of the best biscuits in the state. It's all coming up right here on Discover Oklahoma. In the land of wonder and awe, you won't believe you see what you saw. Where there's something to do for young and for old, where stories are written and then they're retold. Visit TravelOK.com today. Come see for yourself and come out to play. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma, coming to you from Shop Good in Oklahoma City. If you're after an authentic Oklahoma t-shirt, this is the place to stop. And not too far from here is a great place to hit up for lunch. Quinn Tran is going to take us to the Lunchbox in Shawnee. On weekdays, the doors open at 1030 in the morning at the Lunchbox. There's a reason why this restaurant is packed with people. You need to come early if you want, if you want to be guaranteed that you have um, what you want for lunch, you need to come early because if you wait till one or after, then there's not a guarantee that we're gonna have it because it is made, I mean, it's homemade, so when it's gone, it's gone. Lee Rutherford opened the lunchbox in 2017 in downtown Shawnee. 
I have loved to cook my whole life. The eatery stands out, known for its sandwich yep. meat. It's sandwich style, but we don't use deli meat. We roast turkey breast, we have ham on the bone, um, marinade in slow roast tenderloin, it, homemade meatloaf, meatballs, everything is homemade like if you were going to grandma's house. Using family recipes, she and her staff prepare the meals from scratch. The portions are perfect for lunch. Well, my favorite is the chicken salad. It's an old family recipe, and so that is my personal favorite. That is my favorite. Um, the Southwest Turkey Club was the first sandwich that we came up with when we started um, thinking about doing this venture. To this day, it's still our number one seller, and that's been very successful for us. Hi, Blakely, how are you? People of all ages enjoy coming to the Lunchbox, a place that knows everyone by name. It's like my birthday, and I picked this place because it's really good. I usually eat here about once a week, and I just love the home-cooked food. It just says the food's wonderful. The atmosphere is wonderful, and we just love it here. The Lunchbox offers more than just great sandwiches. You can't leave here without trying the desserts. They're homemade, of course. Cookies, cakes, muffins, and banana pudding. Let's give it a try. Mm, that's really good. We have a variety of homemade desserts that rotate through. And we had bread pudding one day, and a man came in, and he's like, oh my gosh, I haven't had this since I was a kid, and my mom made it for me. So those kind of things, those, that's what the lunchbox is about. It's more than just feeding someone's stomach. It's about feeding their soul, too. It's a pleasure to be here and to serve and to take care of my customers each and every day. So I don't really even like the word customer because they're all like family to us. <laughs> it often looks like a family gathering at the lunchbox. This is a favorite lunch spot until 2 o'clock, Monday through Friday. In downtown Shawnee, Quintran, Discover Oklahoma. You will find the lunchbox at 217 East Main Street in Shawnee. They're open for lunch only. No surprise there from 1030 until 2 p.m. on weekdays only. After a great lunch, how about a little shopping? And Shelly Mills is going to take us to do just that at a place called Bison Creek, and it's in Edmond. Bison Creek is one of Edmond's newest boutiques here in downtown Edmond. They have a lot of great local items you'll want to come check out. Bo Lee is no stranger to fashion. He's worked in the fashion industry for more than a decade. Six years ago, he opened a store in Clinton and then in Weatherford. But recently, he closed those stores and moved here to Edmond. I've always wanted to be in Edmond downtown, and then I had a, my brother-in-law tell me about a place. While this store has a lot of great items for men, I have a lot of men's uh, clothing, so brands like Properly Tied, State Tradition, Burrow Bow that have started small and are growing big. Women can also find plenty to love here. I sell everything from suits and dress shoes all the way down to t-shirts and boxers. I mean, gift items, accessories. He also sells products from local companies. You'll find a great selection of fun t-shirts from Calamity Jane, soaps and bath fizz products from Local Lather, and beautiful handmade products from Archaic Provisions. Peyton Hutchison's husband is the owner and builder of the Archaic Provisions pieces, one of his biggest sellers, these cutting boards. He's uh, done some of the kind of the live edge look with um, the big handles and then also just the cutting boards you see every day. He's a home builder who started building cutting boards and furniture in his spare time. He has a, a creative side that um, he really needed to focus that energy on something. All of those pieces are made just down the road at his shop in Edmond. While Bo just opened here a few months ago, he says he has felt incredibly welcomed by this community and he hopes to be here for a long, long time. In Edmond, Shelley Mills, Discover Oklahoma. Bison Creek is located at 1 North Broadway in Edmond. They're open 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday and closed on Sundays. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. This building was built in 1875 and it tells the story of the Cherokee Nations. We take a trip to some of the most sacred soil in the state. You can go from breakfast and come, you know, it's like grandma's biscuits and everything else. Or you can come here and get something completely new. 
and old school or new wave. See why these biscuits are such a hit a little bit later right here on Discover Oklahoma. Gather around and go for a ride through Oklahoma's all-new travel guide. See art, culture, big city venues, blazing neon, flavorful menus. Find a cabin where you can unwind. Grab your travel guide and see what you find. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma. We're checking out the authentically Oklahoman items here at ShopGood in Oklahoma City. The owners here have an awesome backstory, a real love of Oklahoma. The kind of people I bet have a great appreciation of our state's history and of stories of days gone by. Photojournalist Casey Kennedy has one of those for us right now. She takes us to the Cherokee Prison Museum in Tahlequah. This building was built in 1875, and it tells the story of the Cherokee Nation's crime and punishment pre-Oklahoma statehood. So when visitors come to this museum, they can learn about Cherokee Nation's passion for reformation. When you came here, you just didn't sit in a prison cell, you actually learned a skill. Um, so you can, you can walk through the cells that were here at the time and learn about that history that was here. When Cherokee Nation uh, was removed to Indian Territory, they set up their constitutional government in 1839, and after that set, reestablished their three-part government, much like the U.S. government today. And so as part of that, they um, had a court system, and as part of the court system, they eventually adopted a uh, penitentiary where they could send sentence criminals for, for crimes. And so Cherokee Nation was, uh, we like to think, a little advanced in the fact that their prison was not just about a punishment is really about reformation. So you could come here, learn a trade, and hopefully go back into society, um, you know, with some trade like a blacksmith or some trade you may learn here. The history at this prison is really unique. It's a great piece of Oklahoma history. This was the only penitentiary in, in what was Indian Territory, what would later become the state of Oklahoma until 1906. And so this was really the only place where um, during that time there was a place to send prisoners. One of the things you also learn here at the prison is usually the high sheriff actually lived on site and at the prison. And usually if he had a wife, uh, she may have been employed to cook and to prepare meals for the prisoners. So it was kind of a family unit that actually stayed here on site. And the prison actually used to have a third floor, uh, which was removed after the, um, the it operated as a county jail. But that third floor housed the, the sheriff and his family. And so they actually stayed on site here. And um, the family actually helped to contribute to uh, the prison itself as well. The Cherokee National Prison really gives a great example of Oklahoma history. It really gives a place to connect to an early era history that people may not know about. The prison actually has the prison itself and then an interpretive center. The interpretive center tells the stories that are associated with the prison, but not directly. So you can learn about the, the modern day Cherokee Nation law enforcement, our modern martial system. You can learn about uh, outlaws that um, maybe not have stayed in the prison, but um, you would know some names of that have some stories there that, that were prevalent in Indian territory during the time. You can also walk through the prison cells and kind of see what games were played here. How did prisoners pass the time? Um, what trades did they learn while they were here? All those things are shared here in the prison. We offer a program called the Cherokee Passport Program. This is an, a program that you can get at any of our museums. It's set up like a passport. You get a stamp at each location, and it takes you to the Cherokee National Supreme Court. You will learn history about the, the Cherokee Nation court system, Cherokee National Prison, our John Ross Museum in Park Hill, Sequoia's Cabin Museum in Salisaw, the life of the legendary statesman Sequoia, and then the Cherokee Heritage Center as well. We got the pass. We went to the Cherokee Heritage Center, and we went to John Ross because it's part of our heritage. We went every all the places they they have on that pass. And you just pay fifteen dollars, you get to go to all of them. So we were excited. So the Supreme Court Museum is actually the oldest government building in the state of Oklahoma. It was originally built in 1844. It was originally built as a Supreme Court. It actually housed the, uh, the Supreme Court of the Cherokee Nation and then later served as a district court and then later as the offices for the Cherokee Advocate, a paper that was published in both English and Cherokee and distributed to Cherokee Nation citizens. Right in a lot of people's back door from Oklahoma, you can come within you know, an hour, a couple hours drives and you experience this history that you had no idea about. And that's what people are really surprised to see that the Cherokee Nation had this sophisticated government and Cherokee Nation throughout history has really taken care of its people. And that's what these buildings and museums tell us the story of today.
The Cherokee Prison Museum is at 124 East Choctaw Street in Tahlequah. They're open from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. Up next on Discover Oklahoma. We want everyone to come in and feel at home. The place that tastes just like Grandma's house and treats you like she did too when Discover Oklahoma continues. Explore new horizons in your free Oklahoma Outdoor Guide. Get the excitement rolling. Reawaken your sense of adventure. Discover totally unexpected thrills. Order your free Oklahoma Outdoor Guide today at TravelOK.com. We've had such a great time here browsing all of the Oklahoma-themed items at ShopGood in Oklahoma City. We have, but now it's time to eat. That's right. In fact, a short five-minute drive from here is a restaurant I hear has some pretty tasty items on the menu. Tiffany Tatro takes us to a place called Buttermilk. Buttermilk in the Paseo District has a little something for everybody. Whether you want a beautiful biscuit creation or maybe even a healthy salad, they have you covered. Who doesn't love a warm, fresh biscuit straight out of the oven. Every day, every night, we have someone making biscuits by hand. Those biscuits are the basis of buttermilk in the Paseo District. Buttermilk is a restaurant built around a homemade biscuit recipe. It is a very old school biscuit recipe, very minimal ingredients, but we try to use very high end ingredients to kind of boost the final product. The menu is full of mouth-watering creations, like the top-selling Buttermilk Dupree. It's going to have our uh, garlic and parsley hash brown bites. It gets one of our uh, homemade biscuits. It gets some chopped bacon, sausage gravy, and then uh, a sunny egg, and then we top it with some smoked paprika honey. And if you're craving something a little sweeter, the biscuit French toast is for you. It's got a, a cinnamon whipped mascarpone in between the two biscuit that we uh, French, to or French toast on the flat top. It's gonna have some fresh berries and whipped cream on it. But buttermilk doesn't stop at breakfast. The menu is full of lunch options, like the Paseo burger, with grilled jalapeno mayo, pickled red onions, bacon, and cheddar cheese. And you definitely can't go wrong with the buttermilk salad. It's got a pretty simple balsamic vinaigrette, uh, manchego cheese, shaved onions, uh, tomatoes. While the food is incredible, Buttermilk also prides itself on exceptional customer service. We want everyone to come in and feel at home. And you know, Whenever someone comes in your home, you just want to make sure everyone's taken care of. So right when they come in the door, from a good greeting to a good farewell, you just want everything in between to be perfect for them. It's that great hospitality that keeps folks coming back. The service is something that as soon as you walk in the door, they're going to be saying hi to you. Uh, it's kind of a different concept, so if you're not sure what's going on, they're great helping you out, uh, kind of letting you know what's going on. And with such a large variety, there's always something new to try. You can go from breakfast and come, you know, it's like grandma's biscuits and everything else. We can come here and get something completely new and you're like, I, this doesn't seem like it would work, but they somehow make it work. For delicious, one-of-a-kind biscuit creations, check out Buttermilk in the Paseo Arts District. There's really just nothing like it in Oklahoma City. Tiffany Tatro, Discover Oklahoma. Buttermilk is located at 605 Northwest 28th Street in Oklahoma City. They're open 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. daily. And no matter where your next road trip takes you, the Discover Oklahoma Dining Guide will help you find a great place to eat. All you have to do is just log on to our website, TravelOK.com, and click Request Free Brochures to get your copy. A huge thank you to the fine folks here at ShopGood for hosting us this week. The motto here is work hard, do good, have fun, and they live up to it. You'll find them at 1007 North Broadway Avenue in Oklahoma City. They're open 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday and noon to 4 on Sunday. If you can't make it into the storefront, you can always shop online. The website is shopgoodokc.com. And coming up next Saturday on Discover Oklahoma, we're hitting the lake, and let me tell you, the fish are biting. And another stop along Route 66. This time we're listening in on a jam session at the Round Barn. It's all coming up next week right here on Discover Oklahoma. And again, welcome back. Thank you, Dino. <laughs> so until next time, remember. There's always something to discover in Oklahoma. Well, we're really excited to be in Oklahoma City. Um, it's pretty much a landmark event here. We have the Sprint National Team Trials going on where athletes are competing for a spot on the Pan American Games team, which will be held in Lima, Peru later on this year and also the Junior and Under 23 World Championships in Romania, and finally the Senior World Championships, which are gonna be held in Hungary at the end of August. And this is actually the first step 
in the Olympic qualification for Tokyo uh, 2020, the to Tokyo Olympics next year. We've got kids and athletes from pretty much all over the country. Um, we had one para-athlete who flew all the way from Dubai. But what makes it a landmark event is it's not only a sprint uh, national team trials, but we also have the slalom national team trials going on at the same venue. And I'm hard pushed to find anywhere else in the world that actually is able to do that, that can put on a slalom event and a sprint event at the same weekend and at the same time. And Oklahoma City is doing a fantastic job in hosting both of our sports um, for that reason.